This girl literally reminds me of a Blue's Clue. Like, you know how, like, there's that sensory smell idea attachment to people? So, you know, we all have our smell. Like, our smell that are just attached to our pores and stuff. But sometimes we have habits. We do things that um, make that smell attached. And people that vape, right? I'm not anti-vapor. Like, I don't vape. I don't really enjoy being around it per se, but it's like, eh, you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. But you know someone vapes a lot when they literally smell like that every time. I'm not saying the smell is bad, but this girl, she has a blue raspberry attachment to her. It's like, you ever see someone and you're projecting what you're about to smell? Like, she just reminds me of, like, some airheads or, like, Sour Patch Kids, but through the nose. And I know she knows. Um, <laughs> and it's just, uh, yeah, you know, some people talk about having the riz. I say she has the raz. <laughs> All right, that was not good. Uh, but yeah. But yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's the thing. I don't know if I could ever like date someone who vapes like that like or does extracurricular activities um, involving the drugs. I'm not anti-drug, right? But in my experience... Typically, my experience of being around people that participate in this type of stuff, there's a attachment to it that's more unhealthy than the actual act itself. And they always say like, oh, I'm not, you know, attached or addicted, whatever. But it's like, I don't know, because you, you smell like you are. And, you know, there's worse things you can smell like. Some people just use bad shout like you know some bad body wash some people just you know don't so i guess it's better to have like a a, a fragrance to you but the thing is is like these uh candy flavored vape stuff it it just smells so chemical and it's like look if you want to smell like something i i can leave a smell on you um <laughs> It's like, yeah, it smells a little tarty. Um, oh, well, that's why you're my sweet tart. All right, Clint. Um, <laughs> oh, girl, say that laffy taffy. And boy, because I always have the jokes. Sometimes two at a time. And uh, <laughs> that was actually funny because earlier at work, some, what were they talking about? I don't know. It was something about, Man, you know, there was talking about blah, blah, blah. Like, man, it happened two times in one night. And I'm like, well, I'm a two two times in one night type of guy. <laughs> and that's how you know I'm lying. Um, <laughs> I don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> no, nah, but look. But yeah, she got the Raz. And uh, she makes a few things down there razzle-dazzle. Because she always got like the most enhancement crazy like you know some people have a different hairstyle every day which is part admirable but part also like damn like it's a lot of time which i guess props to you but uh yeah welcome to episode 181 of the alpha me podcast with clint nelson i'm your host clint nelson don't forget to like follow comment subscribe hit the notification bell the pod has been striving thriving and uh Busting a few things open, and I wish I could hurt. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, it's like, yeah, just put that vape to the side. Well, you know, unless it makes you feel more open, then by all means, open wide. Um, with all bus wide open. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, but most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to suck some titties. Uh, recording this on February 26th, 2023, at around 1.13 a.m. Eastern, not Pacific, which the time zone shit, like, you know, I was like, why can't we all just be on one time zone? Like, I know it will be dark one place, light one place, but can't the whole world just be on the same time? 
damn, what Clint just come up with shit on the spot. But yeah, look, I know I get like, oh, the earth rotates, the weather, the night, the dark, it keeps everything continuity. It's like, you know what? Just look at the time. That's how you know what time it is, all right? And adjust in your area. Like, hey, if you want to do stuff during the day, then, you know, adjust your times to where you do stuff at 9 p.m. at night when it's light outside. You know, keep the stores open during that time if that really bothers you. Why can't we all just be on the same time frame? And I know there's going to be like some experts about, like, oh, well, there's actually very good reasons. It's actually good for greenhouse effect and, you know, the balance out our pollution and yeah i get it you know workflow but and probably places would be hella crowded now i think about it. like could you imagine like how hella crowded the world would be if everyone was just awake at the same fucking time like how would santa claus ever give us our gifts um but yeah uh whew. i was very proud of the last episode you know, I, I don't, typically I don't re-listen to my episodes and I really re-listen all of it, but just kind of going, I was like, damn, you know, Clint, Clint's really dropping gems and you know, and that's where it stops because this episode is going to be a beautiful, beautiful shit show. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I think it's official that I'm a sexy ass motherfucker. I don't say that lightly. I don't say that with, uh ego or crazy ego because it's good to have ego you know we all have ego nothing wrong with ego you know let go my ego um <laughs> uh, oh i guess it's like let go of my ego is that really what that commercial is supposed to be oh because you're waffling back and forth between your ego and your you know not ego so like if you eat the waffle you know the waffle is your ego and once you eat your ego away, you have an empty plate. And you actually get to see yourself in the reflection of your buttery, syrupy plate. So, maybe that's what the metaphor is. Let go of my ego. You're letting go of your ego after you eat the ego waffle. So now, all you have is yourself to look at when you make decisions. A really bad one or a good one. Depends on how you view on eating a... Highly processed, sugary, amazing blueberry waffle. No, blue waffle. Um, blue raspberry waffle. How come they haven't made blue raspberry waffles? You know, that's the beautiful thing about waffles and pancakes. You can make literally anything out of it. But we just kind of limit ourselves to the basics. Why do we, like, oh, we could put any fruit. Oh, but certain fruits don't go. It's like, it's just bread. Put whatever the fuck you want in it. I mean, we still got people out here committing sinful, egregious activities of peanut butter mayonnaise sandwiches. That is a real thing, by the way. It's a real thing. I don't know if it's a Southern Bell thing, but uh, yeah, if I were to do a whole accent, if I were to do a whole, I'm a whole Southern accent for a whole episode, like you would see someone. Uh, delete themselves on air like I would delete myself after like 15 minutes because I'd be like wow I can't believe people talk like this I can't believe people voluntarily uh speak like this and you know it's like I actually I was talking with someone about accents and your environment obviously is very in influential in your accent right if you are around you know certain religions or if you if you live in different countries like even if you were dropped there at the age of nine and you're just a good old southern american boy by the time you're 16 or 17 just by being around that not only are you going to be speaking their language but you're going to start like the mannerisms of their dialect and how they say it. like if you were dropped in malaysia I don't know. I don't even know what Malaysia speaks. So, as a why out of all the countries or what? Why would I pick Malaysia? I know absolutely nothing about Malaysia other than the fact that a tsunami took them out like in 2009, and it was a really bad tsunami. Um, but like, well, what if you were dropped in uh, Australia, right? Like, you're telling me you're not going to like have a little hey, boomerang? That's not Australian. Uh, can I get a little boomerang? Um, 
I, I don't even know. I was, I'm not even in the right mindset to even try to imitate some. Uh, kind of like imitation crab, but uh, the crabs I give you, there's no imitating that. Um, <laughs> I, I like. I honestly couldn't believe like there. It was a few years ago. Someone sent me to the store, and on the list they said, "Hey, get some imitation. Don't forget the imitation crab." I'm like, "Why would I get you a stuffed animal?" Like I was dead serious. I never heard of imitation crab in my life. They're like. No, lol, silly. It's for the dish I'm gonna make. She was making like some crab, shrimp, Alfredo pasta. And I'm like, wait, imitation crab? So, like, I didn't know this was the thing. And it's actual, like, thing in a can. It's like, it's not that it's not crab, but it's also not 100% crab. If that makes sense, which I guess like any food, honestly, like it's not 100% anything of what you think you're buying, even if it says it is, because there had to be other things to make that happen. Nothing's 100% unless they just came out of the grass or it's just, it's not like crab, it's not like crab just falls out of the trees. It's not like when you go buy, you know, sausage, it's not just these sausage links and rolls, just like, boom, it bloomed. Like, now there was a lot of processing. So there's always, it's never just what it is. But I couldn't believe it. Imitation crab. Like, why would someone voluntarily eat anything that has imitation in it? It, it feels like you're, it, it feels like I would be eating like a carbon copy or like a duplicate. It's like literally in a lab, they're just like, copy and paste so i was actually kind of amazed like damn like this would be amazing business and marketing you just have to make some one time and somehow you copy and paste it hundreds and hundreds of times and your profit margin is going to be insane insane because it's not real it's imitation now granted look obviously imitation crap isn't that's not how it works but i was so confused i didn't think it was real so I'm going around trying to find this imitation crab and it's like one in the morning at Walmart and I actually, I, I hate asking customer service, right? I hate actually asking people on the job to actually help with their job because anyone at a job where they're working 1 a.m., if you ask them anything, like they look at you like you're the one that's responsible for their low wage. It's like, look, I'm just trying to find some imitation crab. Which is probably about as much as your hourly salary. All right. But hey. So they basically think that you're about <laughs> worth as much as some imitation crab an hour. That's how much work they think you do an hour. But don't get mad at me. I don't write your checks. My name's not on your checks. My names barely go through on my checks. All right. So just checking in. Uh, where's the imitation crab? And. Uh. I actually asked the service, I actually asked like an employee and they legitimately told me, what are you talking about? And I was like, okay, I'm not crazy. So this thing is not real. She's fucking with me. Like this person who's telling me to get this is fucking with me. And they're like, I've never heard of that before. I'm like, thank you. So they're like, hold on, let me ask. <laughs> it became like this search party. They're like, hold on, let me ask someone else. Like, and they ask someone else, and they're like, oh yeah, imitation crab. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, what? Like, yeah, it's a thing. It's like, oh, well, where is it? They're like, oh, I don't know where it is. But <laughs> like, well, this is uh, kind of useless. And eventually, it was in the seafood aisle because that's where crab is. But yeah. Imitation crab. If you go to any restaurant and you have crab in your food, it's probably imitation. Um, shit, completely went off the rails there. But yeah, uh, don't imitate this boy wonder. Oh, isn't she wonderful? Bye. <laughs> A random song came on while I was at the gym. I don't know why I like it said. So she my mama jama. Well how's the song go? She say She's a bad man pajama. And the song is she's a 
bad mama jamma. But then in parentheses, <laughs> I started laughing. I'm like, I didn't know that they put these type of words in the songs back then. Like, this is a song for like the 80s and 90s. And in parentheses, you know how like they have the song titled in parentheses? It's like some like, it'll be like a sub title within the song. Like if the song's like, I'll always love you. And then in parentheses, it'll be but dot, dot, dot. And then, you know, whatever. And in the parentheses, it was, she's super stacked. <laughs> I wish I could remember the set. I remember, I just started laughing. I was in between sets. I was in between the set and I had to take an extra minute because this song from the 80s, literally in parentheses, like, yeah, she's super stacked. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I love the transparency. Um... She's a bad man pajama. Uh, uh, I don't know. Anytime I hear that song, I don't know when I hear that song. I don't know why, even though the song was not in this movie. I think of Remember the Titans. It feels like that type of time frame, even though Remember the Titans actually takes place in like the 50s or 60s, because that's when like integration of schools is kind of like, you know, the origin of how these teams combined. And that song was probably more like from the 70s, 80s. But for some reason, I felt like that would be a song in there. I don't know why. But yeah, good stuff. Uh, whoo, 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 whoo. Uh, I. No, a cat. She pees on my clothes, and I'm about to throw her ass outside as she's staring at me because I think she peed on my clothes. But see, I think it was one of those subtle pees, right? It's uh, one of those P's and Q's. And she decided to pee on my shorty Q's because they're shorts, and the shorties are supposed to look at my shorts and see. The booty popping. Um, but yeah. Should you, you know, I, I've been having this. Should you call your animal? Look, I'm very anti treating your animals like they're your kids. Yeah, you give me those fucking eyes. I know you're looking at me, you dirty fucking little. Never mind. Who animal abuse. Um. <laughs> Should you ever call your animal your daughter, your son? I honestly think no. I, I, I don't think they hold the same value. Like, yes, if they die, cry, you know, sympathize, bury them, you know. But, you know, put a, put a picture on the wall. Oh, remember, she was a good cat. Even when she would pee all over my fucking clothes. But, <laughs> I, I, I don't view... My dog or my cat as my son or my daughter. Uh oh. Uh oh. She's literally throwing up in real time. It's like it's on cue. This cat is on cue. To be part of a gospel choir. Yeah, yak it up. Is she holding it in? She holding it in because she knows daddy's recording. You know what? Maybe she is my daughter after all. I don't know. Then <laughs> she looks at me like. I don't call no one daddy. It's like, well, that's why you're neutered. Um, <laughs> I didn't do it, though. Um, you came to me like this. I brought you in like this, baby. Um, it's like, I mean, it's no different. Like, if you were the meet, if you're a guy and you meet a woman and she already got her tubes tied, it's like, you know, you accept her the way she is, right? And you probably get extra benefit. Like, hey, you know what? I don't have to, like, I secretly never wanted kids. But I always use that as an extra thing, is like the sacrifice I'm making of being with someone I love, even though we can't have kids. And kids is always something I wanted, but you had your tubes tied, and I respect that. And deep down, you're like, thank God. But you have to pretend. But then you can always have this. So she has an extra appreciation that she has, like, man, I have to hold on to this man, or he's going to get another woman pregnant. Because I can't get pregnant. Um, isn't this some fucked up psychology? But it's uh, it's the truth. 
it's only fucked up if it's true, right? Because it's not fucked up if it's complete out there and not believable and it's not common or not relative. It's only we we only consider something fucked up if it's a lot more true and realistic than it's not, right? Like it's like all these you know all these videos and skits about the side piece, you know, like how man, you know when. When your wife comes home an hour earlier and your side piece has to hide in the closet and do all this shit. It's like, the reason why these kids get is because, you know what? There's a lot of people living that type of life. And I'm not anti-side piece. I get it. I'm not even anti-main piece. I'm not even anti-have a piece. You know, I'm, I'm a Reese's Pieces type of guy, you know? Um, a little peanut butter on the tail end never hurts, and that's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh... Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. Um, damn, babe, your face is puffing. Puff the magic dragon. Or more like Puffy from SpongeBob. <laughs> uh, just do the dishes. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, yeah, you know, I just uh, don't... Shit, what was I talking about? Jesus Christ. I completely went off the rails. But, yeah, you know, I just... Uh, I, I, I'm just kind of a... Uh, what the fuck was I talking about? I don't know if you lose track of what you're talking about. If that's a good sign. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you got you got to make her believe that you want a kids. Even though she came into the situation with the tubes tied. And then she may be like, you know what, honey? The problem is then you may get married in like five years. Later. She's like, you know, I never want to have you feel held back. So, I got a little gift for you. And I was like, oh, what was that? So then she pulls out some medical report where two months ago she actually has documentation that she had her tubes untied. But um, you've been uh, untying a few things inside of her in the meantime. And she never told you. Next thing you know, then it's like, oh, wait, there's a part two of the scavenger hunt. So you're searching around and it's a positive pregnancy test. And then she surprises you. And now, that kid that you never wanted, but you pretended you wanted because she had her tubes tied and you made her feel guilty, well, now she feels elated that she's able to give you what you want, but now she actually gave you what she didn't want. And now, your relationship is fucked. So, yeah, uh, moral of the story is, is I guess, um, keep your tubes tied. No matter what, when in doubt, keep your tubes tied. Oh, and by the way, you know, there's always this pro-choice, pro-woman choice thing. And, you know, that's what you're for, that's what you're for. And typically that applies to a woman having the option to keep a child or not. Um, so, if it's supposed to be a choice for a woman, if you were to get the abortion but that child would have been a girl are you really pro choice for a woman and i and i i know the argument is like well they're not developed they're not this and that and i'm not this isn't a i'm not even religious this isn't a point about abortion if it's right or wrong i'm just honestly trying to I'm on, I like to theorize and bring extreme realistic hypothesis of like, how do people view this stuff? It's like, oh, well, they're not old enough to make a decision and stuff. It's like, yeah, over time you develop, but you have to be alive to develop and to be able to one day be mature enough or to be old enough to even make a decision, right? But being pro-choice for a girl or woman, well, they have to be here. And I guess it's like, are you really pro-choice a woman? Or are you pro your individual selfish choices? Because pro-choice for anything is supposed to be the choice of people across the board of who it applies to. Not just situations that directly only apply to you. So I don't know. It was just a little, little theory. I know people probably aren't going to like that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just like throwing shit out there. Um Apparently she likes to throw it out there too, which is why uh, 
We're having twins. Um, the yin yang. I gave her that yin. She gave me that yang. Now we got twins. Uh, and these towers are okay. I'm not gonna finish that sentence. There's enough natural. Apparently, there's been 63 plus mass shootings. Apparently, like it's averaging like. One and a half mass shootings a day, which a mass shooting is anything that kills over two people. So I guess a bar is pretty low. Not that you would want that bar to be high, but it's like someone being a serial killer. It's like, yeah, there's a difference between a serial killer, someone who's killed two people, and someone who's killed 48. Now they're on first 48 and (laughs) last 48. Um, There's a bit of a difference. Like being a serial anything... I'm thinking of, we're talking like 8 plus anything. If you're a serial killer, I'm assuming you've killed like 8 plus people. If you're a serial, like, offender of anything, I'm assuming you've done it 5, 8, 15, 50 times. Not 2 times. Like, twice is like, "Mm, I had to confirm that this is what I really like. Or this is who I really am. It's like, if you have gay sex... You have to do it more than once to find out, I guess, if you're really gay or not. Like, damn, do I really like this? And then you do it again. And then if after the second time you still don't know, you know. But I'll give you two times. And then you can say it never happened. Okay. But point of matter is, oh, well, damn, that shit took a turn. Um, but, you know, like, if you're going to be... A mass murderer, like you might as well go all the way. You're gonna spend the same amount of time in jail. And if you're gonna have the title of something, you better be have the title that like makes people intimidated around you. Like, I'm sorry, someone killing two people does not make me scared around them. Someone killing 30 people, including you know, five kids because they just ran in the Amityville houses and just started. You know, stabbing and axing people in their beds. Like, that person scares the living fuck out of me. Not some person that's just like, oh, I hit someone while they were jaywalking. And then when I was on the run, I accidentally, you know, uh, got in an accident and, you know, killed some guy in his blue Tacoma. Like, there's levels to this. Your intent of why you did it, how you did it. How grisly? How much did you really feel it? How bad did you want to do it? How, like, are you explaining your reasoning after? you just like, yeah, that's what I fucking do. Like, I, I, I can tell, right? I need you to be less passionless. I need you to be more passionless about why you did it. For me to be intimidated. By. I'm not scared of people that kill people. I'm not. I'm scared of someone... That is like on the ticking clock of killing their first person. Because those are the people that are just like, whoa. But like the ones that have done it, you're like, all right, I know what I'm getting. Yeah, like I just want, I I think we all just want to know what we're getting more than anything. Like I think the older you get, what you just want, you just want to have like a comfort of, ah, you know what? At the very least, I know what I'm not going to get from this person. And that's okay. I think that's why, like, the older you get, people settle for, like, the boring partner. Or they settle for the safe partner. Because it's like, you know what? I know what I'm going to get. They know who they are. I know who they are. Like, the most surprising thing over the next 40 years of our time together is... They'll probably get, like, you know, the spicy chicken deluxe sandwich at Chick-fil-A instead of the regular deluxe sandwich at Chick-fil-A. Like, that's probably the most biggest change they're ever going to make. And that's going to be a change where it's like, holy shit. They may go from unsweet tea to half and half tea because, you know, they're really trying to test their bloodstream. Um, That's about as, like deep of a jump they're gonna get in their risk taking right so and i think the older you get like you don't you don't want someone that's like 
on the clock like you're at the draft. Like they're on the clock and you don't know who they're going to pick. You don't know if they're going to trade out. You don't know if they're going to have a bipolar episode. You don't know if they're going to lose their shit. You don't know if they're going to jump out of your car while you're driving because, you know, you told them not to touch your stereo um, and not to change when it's on the queue. Like if I have it added to the queue, there's a set playlist I have. I don't like the same boring playlist. I set the playlist before I leave and add it to the queue. And when you fuck up with the queue. Okay, calm down. Um. Then they jump out of the car, cause a scene, cause traffic, and then next thing you know, you look like an asshole who let their girlfriend walk home for eight miles. It's like, yeah, I did. I dropped her off in a safe place too. So you know what? It's like, I don't want that. I want someone that's not going to touch the cue to begin with. Let the cue beat the cue. All right? But yeah, that's what I want. That's what we want. We want someone that doesn't touch are things we don't want someone that changes it up for you know spontaneity i don't want spontaneity i want the exact same shit every day (sighs) this sounds like i'm like talking about something personal i promise i'm not um mostly um (laughs) no we just we just want a I, i think honestly being serious Like, I I do think, like, the older you get, you just want, you do want a built-in structure from people. You want people that aren't going to fuck up with your structure. And that, that's from anyone you invite, anyone you communicate, anything that you voluntarily factor into your life. Like, all of that is going to factor in, you know, if, um... You, all that is going to really just, I guess, factor in if, um, you want actual interest or something decent in your life. Like, look, there's a time and place, like, we all need people in our life that just like, hey, today's the day we're going to go fuck some shit up. We all need that friend. We all need that partner once once in a while. That's why, like, you date someone who's a little bit of a cuckoo for a few months just to get out of your system just so you can realize that this was like someone I had to live with for like five years I would be dead I would be absolutely dead and it would be too much I'm a man of structure and discipline yeah mostly people I'm like a free people say oh you look like such a free spirit it's like I, I don't operate as a free spirit. My whole day is planned out relatively. I'm very regimented. I actually have a job. I actually like, you know, go to it. I actually like take my everything pretty serious. I'm not this free spirited guy that's just like, you know what? Wherever the wind takes me, you know what? Maybe I'll shave. Maybe the gods will do it. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe when I walk the street, I'll ask someone to rub my back. Maybe maybe I'll just go and be like, you know what? Join a cult. Maybe I'll just go join a cult. Because you know what free-spirited people really... Now I think free-spirited people are really just people who actually have no idea what they want from themselves and what they want in life. So they let life take them and they let the wind take them. And they're viewed as these bold and... Uh, Their views, these bold, venturous people, but in reality, they are just weak minded people who have no idea of what actually makes them happy. So they are seeking something that is literally flaky. Like they are flaky people. They, you know, and they're the people that talk about, oh, love is so pure and all this, but they would be the first ones to just be like, you know what? I I just don't feel our uh, stars align. I don't really feel like uh, we really connect on a deeper level anymore. Like, you know, they'd be that type of shit. And it'd just be random. It'd be like, you know what? I just need to find myself again. It's like, you're 43. You've been finding yourself for quite some time. And you suck at finding anything. May I recommend a game of I Spy? Huh? Maybe get you a little telescope. 
Because you know what? Maybe you could find your free spirit. You could see some stars align out there because that's where it actually fucking happens. Maybe you could see your bionicle star that actually fucking aligns with your little oozy fucking forehead. All right? But, uh, I these are like fucking free spirits. And I get triggered when I get called like, oh, you look like such a loose guy. You like such a loose free spirit. It's like, first of all, pause. Don't ever call me a loose guy. All right? There's nothing loose about me. It's all tight. Because you know why? I've never loosened it up one time. Everything's tight. My body is hard and tight. There's nothing loose. All right? I don't have the wings in my back anymore. All right? I, I am so tight with everything I do. Everything is planned. Everything is regimented. Everything has a purpose. Not... I don't let outside things create my purpose. Whatever the fuck that bullshit means. But that's what these dumbass free spirit. It's like, you know, you don't know what your purpose is. Because your purpose is constantly evolving and changing. It's like, no, actually, I kind of know what I want to do. And I don't let other things or however the fucking climate change or the weather. Because the natural disaster, if it takes your house... Are you going to let the tsunami, you going to let the waves be your new purpose? Like, oh, I guess I'm just supposed to be Aquaman. It's like, no, you're drowning. You can't swim because you've been so focused on being a free spirit. You forgot how to fucking swim. Go to whitewater. Go to a wave pool. Take a swimming lesson. Swim. But these people don't actually take action to learn things in case something happens. They just say circumstances and you just ride the wave. It's like, yeah, but you got to be able to ride the wave. Can you surf? Can you boogie board? Did I mention can you swim? Can you float? Can you doggy paddle? Jesus, these fucking free-minded, oh, love is just love. Yeah, it's called, those are called, yo, yo, like, I I watched this documentary. There's, There's this channel. I haven't seen a video in a while, but. I think her channel is called like Not Good Girl, but she does like these 50 minute hour long documentaries about very specific things that are actually very well done for like a YouTube channel. And she did one about this yoga teacher. I forgot her fucking name, but you know, they give these, you know, weird ass names to these yogis. It's like, who the fuck, like, yogis? I'm your master. Like, these, you, you, like, you literally are sitting in a, you are literally sitting in a crisscross applesauce. Telling me I need to find a higher purpose. It's like, I bought a thing of applesauce and finished that shit in a day and a half. Are you saying my purpose is only for a day and a half? Like, I can't take you serious when you, people think because they like present themselves in a godly, like spiritual woo way that like they know what the fuck they're talking about. And I'm so fucking tired of these free spirit. We know your path in life. We know because it's all look all these all these shits are really signs of like cults and like-minded ways of thinking and it my biggest thing with people is people that had don't even have the capacity or are afraid to actually think for themselves and if you think for yourselves and you still do these things that is great but a lot of people dive into these different things out of desperation of finding answers and I get it, you know, you're in places in life or whatever, and you're just trying to find peace, you're just trying to find, you know, love and passion and things to care about and things that love you back and actually give back to what you put in, and that's great, but doing a couple deep stretches, you know, on your knees and then stretching your shoulder blades up, that's not exactly what I would call finding your purpose, because you can only do that for like, you know, 40 minutes a day without you looking kind of sus, all right, so... I, I, and I'm getting called this free spirit because I have Jesus beautiful hair. I don't know if it's beautiful, but you know, it's all messed up in places. But like, it, it's weird when you are, because I give off a look of something, but I am like the complete opposite. Maybe that's my sex appeal. You think you're getting one thing, you're getting another. You think you're going to be rammed by a bull. In reality, I'm just like, 
I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this never happens to me. Um, <laughs> uh, line still works. Um, I promise to say, like, you're the first girl that's made this happen to me. You're so special. <laughs> God, I love that you're the first girl to make this happen to me. To make them feel extra special. Like, you know what? Like, she's really inside thinking, like, man, I made this man. Never mind. I'm not, I'm not even going to go down there. <laughs> but we've all done with, like, damn, you know, you just you just make me feel something that just brings it out of me so quickly. Um, <laughs> it's a sexual eruption. Because you're so beautiful. Um, but, yeah. Free, free spirited people. I fucking hate them. I absolutely hate them. And somehow these free spirited people somehow always end up demanding that you pay them a lot of money for their free spirit. So I guess it's not really that free. When you really think about it. Like, you know, I was over here and, you know, these fucking relationship Bullshit woman. I don't even want to say woman. But it really is just these relationship spiritual experts that they want to talk about feminine energy and masculine. And this girl, this woman was talking about like she's had marriage figured out. And she was like, oh, basically she's been with her husband like 11 years. And she's trying to explain to the audience that like, oh, you know, the honeymoon phase. That part is it's just this made up thing people make. Like the honeymoon phase should be constant. It should never end. The honeymoon phase should still be like she's like to this day, me and my husband, we still have that feeling of aliveness in our marriage because we call each other out and stuff. Like the honeymoon phase of love. It's like, you know, there's a lot of people that call their partners out all the time. Which is why the honeymoon phase is over. See, like, and with the way she was explaining, Kyra, she was like, yeah, it calls her like, no, you, I don't like when you do that. It's like, ooh. It's like, no, you want to know how most couples argue and why the honey is like, shut the fuck up. I fucking can't stand you. I fucking can't stand X, Y, and Z about you. I hate when you do this. You aggravate the living fuck out of me. That is really how real arguments and stuff work, which is why the quote unquote honeymoon phase, it kind of gets thrown out of the equation. It turns into honey, give me that moon phase. Um, <laughs> oh, honey, so sweet and thick like honeycomb. Um, be happy, be healthy. Well, she's British, so cheerio. Um, <laughs> but let me uh, pollinate your seeds. Um, but yeah. Like, that's why the honeymoon phase is, quote, unquote, typically naturally phased over time. Because true emotion in real life actually gets in the way. And you realize honeymoon phase is not supposed to be this all over lifetime. A honeymoon is supposed to be a temporary period of time that's supposed to be an elation of feeling where you're not actually having to think or worry about nothing yet. That's what a honeymoon is. When you go on a honeymoon after a wedding, it's supposed to be you go to a grand location, a vacation place that you're probably never going to visit again, that you could probably never afford again. It's probably the nicest place you guys ever go to in your time together. And you're supposed to just enjoy those four days to a week and just have your time together. Because it's never going to happen again. That's why it's called a honeymoon. It doesn't mean you stop caring. It doesn't mean that you don't stop doing nice things for your partner. But this whole like, oh, it still feels like we're on the honeymoon. And that part should never end. It's like, no, there's actually realistic reasons for why this stuff fades over time. But then at the end, when she's telling, you know, giving her advice to this and that. And then she's like, but my two, but my... No, sorry. My $397 masterclass. But I'm going to give it to you guys for free. It's like, first of all, no one ever gives anything that's worth $397 and just like, hey, you know what? Fuck it. You guys get it for free today. And it doesn't happen. You get a free double cheeseburger at McDonald's if they just have one sitting in the heat and part. And they're like, here, we're not going to give anyone else. Here. They don't give away a thing that's worth essentially $400 out for free. One, if it's really worth the shit. Two, if it's actually worth $400. And three, if you actually know what the fuck you're talking about. Or five, if you're fucking lying. I think I skipped a number, but you get the point here. 
Follow these free spirit. I'm selling you some shit. It's all a cult. It's all fucking fake. And that's why this whole like. When you can sell spiritual. you It's really no different than religion. It's funny how people are anti-religion. But then they want to follow the spiritual route. But they're selling you the same bullshit that you would hate about religion. So it's all the fucking same. They are selling you a belief. They are selling you a faith. And they are selling you to blindly follow a leadership or order from someone who is not really quantifiable if they know what the hell they're talking about or if it's even true. So yeah. Fuck free spirits. <laughs> well, hopefully there's no free spirits up in here. Um, I'm not a friendly... Uh, ghosts kind of scare me. Um, but yeah, I think I'll end it there. Not a bad episode. But yeah, that was episode 181 of the Off and Beat Podcast with Clint Nelson. Don't forget to like, follow, comment, subscribe, and notification bell on all apps. Most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to suck some titties. And um, keep your cat away from me and the world. All right, guys. Have a great day whenever this is posted. Whew, it's good to be back on this regular schedule podcasting. Oh, baby. Oh, look at... Oh, baby. This is just if you stay long enough. Look at... Ooh, ooh, oh, okay. Now we're getting too much.